So, uh, any questions? So we discussed the simple rules, uh, and uh, and yeah, some general properties. So general properties uh, of uh, simple rules, right? Um, so now uh, there are two things that still remains to be done. One is going back to chapter thirteen. This, uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't have time because this itself will take maybe two lectures hmm, going through that. But it's it's basically straightforward. Chapter thirteen. Hmm? It's uh, just I mean explicitly the basis is given. All the matrices. It's just a matter of conveniently choosing some uh, basis, you know, uh, for the. Cartan sub algebra and simple roots uh, and the non zero, I mean, non zero roots are the roots. Eh? Uh, so, this is done for an S, 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 U, N. Well, complexified version of S, U, N is the same as S, L, N, C. Uh, then, also done for S, O, 2, N and S, O, 2, N plus 1 because they behave a bit differently. S, O, 2, N and S, O, 2, N plus 1 they behave differently uh, in when you look at the roots and so on. Root structures is a bit different. So, so 2n is n, and finally S, sp symplectic. So all of them are done uh, by choosing appropriate basis. Uh, so I mean, I, I just uh, okay. I, I will not go into detail, but just let me just mention. Suppose I take S u n. S u n means uh, so it's a Lie algebra is um, uh, n by n uh, Hermitian. Or anti hermitian uh, traceless matrices, right? Like SU3 was 3 by 3, now it will be n by n. Right? So, what is the idea then? One can again choose a Cartan uh, to be simply diagonal matrices, okay? but the trace has to be 0. So, I could choose, for example, uh, elements like this uh, I, ith row, and ith column. And I put a one here, okay, and uh, say uh, i plus one -th column, and uh, i plus one -th row. I put a minus one here. That is, uh, I can choose that guy. It's a traceless, so it's fine. And then let me just call this as uh, hi. Then I can take uh, this the, uh, a basis as hi i going from, let me put here su n plus 1. So this is n plus 1 cross n plus 1. Okay. So then, OK, well, what is the range of i? Well, i can go from 1 up to n, not n plus 1. Mm. Right? Because the last one would be n plus 1. This will be i plus 1 would be n plus 1. So h i will i, I going from 1 to n. This uh, is a basis for the Cartan. Algebra. Hmm? Because any other element I can write it as a sum, linear combinations of this. So this will provide a basis for uh, Cartan sub algebra. The rank with uh, mean, Cartan sub algebra is n, n dimensional, right? S u n plus 1, uh, it has n, n dimensional Cartan sub algebra. And these are the basis. You can choose, a, I mean, any basis, but uh, this is a convenient basis. So that's what happens. And then uh, the non-zero roots. Non-zero roots are just uh, take, all, uh, so positive roots will be, uh, every, I mean, all of the diagonals are zero, or I think zero, and choose anywhere. I mean, uh, say some uh, ith element and the jth uh, column, ith row and jth column. I put a one here and everything else zero. I think this is what I was calling eij, right? Yeah, eij, where since, uh, so positive roots will be the one which are upper triangular, which means uh, um, j is bigger than i. Okay. That will be the positive roots. All this will correspond to the positive roots. And uh, e i j with j less than i would be delta minus. So it's very, very much like SU3. I mean, this is exactly what we did for SU3. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, so that is easy. That's, a, that's the first part, uh, the first part of chapter 13. I'm just uh, now. If I look at SO, so SU, I mean SUN is a straightforward generalization of SU3. Hmm? 
nothing big deal. Huh? That one can do. Now, if you take uh, SU, uh, SO, uh, SO2N, so I mean, SO2N is what? 2N by 2N antisymmetric matrices, right? So this is 2N by 2N antisymmetric matrices. So now there is no way, I mean, I cannot choose diagonal matrices any. Uh, here we were fortunate, these are all diagonal. I mean, diagonals were allowed. Only condition was it was traceless, right? But now there is no diagonal matrix. So what, what is the next best thing you can do? Well, the way to think about this is, I mean, if I take this 2n by 2n matrices, I can write it to 2 by 2 blocks. Hmm? So, so write it like this. So each of them is a 2 by 2 block. Hmm? So this is a two, every single one is a 2 by 2 block. So then how many blocks will be there? n of them here and then n of them there. Right? Because total is 2n and 2n. Now in each of these, you can choose, uh, for example, so you can choose uh, a Cartan, a basis for the Cartan as uh, uh, put, uh, put say in the ith block, ith block, ith diagonal block. So there is a block here, diagonal block. This is the ith block. Ith, uh, yeah. Uh, I put here 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and everything else 0. This is a suddenly anti symmetric matrix. So in the ith block, essentially you put the, this is what? i times sigma 2, right? You put a i times sigma 2 on the ith block. ith 2, ith diagonal block, yeah? and everything else 0. So this could, I could call HI, and then how many HIs will be there? It's clearly there are n blocks here, so there are n diagonal blocks. So I goes from 1 to n. Okay, and that uh, is that's this is the, of course any one or any two of them will anti-commute, right? If I take HI and HJ, where I is not equal to J, uh, uh, this commutation relation is zero because I mean. Uh, let's say this is uh, fourth block. This is i equal to four, and there is another one, three, uh, the three block, third block. So when you multiply the two matrices, so one matrix is the fourth block, and another matrix is sitting here, the third block. No, this is the third block. Okay. So when you multiply, this fourth block will never see that, right? I mean, this is the fourth, uh, fourth block here. This would see something which would be here, right? Is that clear? I mean, the matrix multiplication. So this way, when you multiply, is directly zero. If you do other way, this will only see. This will only see if something which was there in the third block, but there's nothing in the third block. Okay. So this is zero, uh, and uh, you can also convince yourself that anything else that you put that will not commute with these guys. With not, I mean, not with all of them. Will not commute all. Of them. It may commute with some of them, but not with all of them. Okay, so so this will be the Kartan. Again, H will be generated by that the basis. And off diagonal. So how about the roots? Now it's much more complicated huh? because roots. Again, roots you will do say the non-zero roots. Uh, so you ch choose a uh, not much more complicated, but it's a little bit complicated. So if you look at uh, the non-zero roots, so I will have to look at some off off diagonal block. Because the diagonal block, this is all I can have. Because the diagonal elements are zero anyway, right? So this is forced to be zero, and this has to be anti-symmetric. So it, it has to be some number times this, right? But off diagonal block, if I look at, let's say, uh, fourth here and the third, uh, let's say, third block here and the fourth block there. So these are blocks, two by two blocks. So I have a two by two block there. It is not diagonal, okay? So you can have, Anything here, x, y, z, w, right? Because then there will be another block which will be in the fourth row here and the third here. There will be another block here. Transpose of that will be connecting to that, right? So what it tells you that this is minus x, minus, oh, it's not very really visible, minus x, minus y, minus uh, y, minus, okay. minus z, minus w. So there are all, all possibilities are there, right? So four possibilities. So you should find, and that is what is done in this ch in the chapter 13. Yeah? 
that there are certain combinations of these guys. You, you have four different combinations of these guys, uh, which will form uh, eigenstates. So there will be your roots. So things like that. I mean, so there is some some amount of, but it's a straightforward calculation. Nothing, no conceptual issue. Huh? Just try to see what combinations uh, are, uh, you can cho you should choose such that uh, this co co commutation relation with any of the HI with this guy uh, will give you back again some number times this guy. Hmm? Okay, so this is the point here. It's all I mean all all, all the results are given, but you'll have to check because all, not all the algebraic details are given here, right? All the results are given in chapter 13, but you sit down and check. What's the big difference between SO2n plus 1 and SO2n? You see, SO2n plus 1, what will happen? So now suppose, so this is the 2n by 2n, right? So 2n by 2n, I've split into these 2 by 2 blocks. But if it's a 2n, SO2n plus 1, you have one row and one column left over, right? This, you cannot make it as a 2 by 2 block because 2n plus 1 is odd. No? So you have n. 2 by 2 blocks on this each of these uh, lines, uh, but there's one row and one column is left over. And that, I mean, uh, if you look at the diagonal part of this, this guy is necessarily zero. There's nothing else you can do, right? So you see, in SO2 n plus 1, also the Cartan subalgebra is just generated by this n of them. Okay, so this is interesting that SO2 n has rank n. Rank meaning rank is the, I don't know whether I introduce this word rank. Rank is nothing else but the dimension of the uh, Cartan subalgebra. Okay. So I, I should let me write this. Dimension of the Cartan subalgebra of this guy is n. Whereas if you take SO2 n plus 1, it is also the dim of h, corresponding h is again n. That's the point. And uh, then, uh, yeah, uh, and then uh, you will uh, you will have in SO2n plus 1 all of these roots that you have constructed for the SO2n, right? Plus something more because you have still this part, right? So you can have uh, here any, any x here, say in the second, uh, I mean any any element. I put here some x, uh, x y, let's say in the in a, some block here. I mean some this two by two part, but here is only one one column. And then I put uh, the corresponding here minus x minus y. Okay, this will be anti-symmetric. And then again, you have to find the combinations which will make it eigenstate. Hmm? Uh, so you will have more non-zero roots than the SO2n, of course, because dimensions are different. Hmm? I mean, here, how many non-zero roots will be there? Because here, the, we know the total dimension of the, this SO2n is 2n times 2n minus 1 by 2, right? Which is uh, 2n square uh, minus n. Okay. Now, these are the total dimension. n is the dimension of the Cartan subalgebra. Okay. So, how many uh, generators are there outside the Cartan, not in the Cartan subalgebra? It will be this minus that, right? So, that will be the, so the non zero roots must be 2n square minus 2n. Right? So, so non-zero roots, so delta there must be uh, 2n uh, square minus uh, 2n, so 2n times n minus 1, uh, non-zero roots must be there, hmm? of which half of them must be delta plus positive roots and half of them must be negative roots. Okay? So delta plus will have n times n minus 1. So those guys, these guys are already there, even for the SO2n plus 1, because I'm using the same Karta generators, right? So as far as the 2n by 2n block is concerned, those non-zero roots will be there. But there will be more coming from this type of objects. Okay. Put everything else zero here, just here. In choose one, some block here, there you, there's, you have only one column here, and here there's only one row. Not, it's not a 2 by 2 block. Hmm? So how many are there now, let's see. So dimension of uh, so dimension of SO two n plus one is what is two n plus one times two n plus one minus one, which is two n divided by two, 
which is uh, 2n square plus n, right? 2n square plus n. And the dimension of the Cartan subalgebra is the same, which is n. So the, how many roots will be there? 2n square plus n minus n, which is 2n square. So the number of roots, number of the roots in delta, number of roots, must be that. And of course, the positive roots will be half of that, which is n squared. Clearly, that's more than this. So there are uh, n more positive roots here uh, in SO2 n plus 1. Because here it's n squared minus n positive roots. Here we have n squared positive roots. Right? So there are n more roots, positive roots, and they come from these guys, from these ones. In fact, you can see uh, how many possibilities are there. There are two n here, right? Uh, the last one, so this this row I'm looking at, it's two n of these guys, and then of course this is anti-symmetric, so two n, these two n are fixed. Then the total extra roots will be two n, of which half of half will be positive root and half will be negative root. So all that is done there, and this is the reason why the SO two n and SO two n plus one are somewhat different. Mm -hmm. When we talk about positive roots, right? They are not the. Eh, sorry, sorry, you repeat again. Uh, the column uh -huh. we added is the for the positive root. We don't have any below, and the other one. No, so here, here, here we cannot do this. No, here uh, in the SO, SO, the, uh, the, by definition, SO are the space of all the anti-symmetric matrices, right? Now you can complexify it, but it doesn't matter. You, you cannot, you can never make the bottom guy zero, unlike SUN. See, SUN, what was the reason? Uh, you, had, uh, you had a possibility of, uh, you, you have, if you have something off-diagonal, let's say some off-diagonal guy Z here, then it has to be Z bar here, right? Uh, for revision. But so in, so in general, you'll have is I can have put 1, 1 here, or I can put here I minus I. Right? Yes, but for the roots, they were not in there. Yeah, but now, this was for the real case. I mean, for the values. But now we complexify the base, uh, Lie algebra, right? So I'm allowed to put multiply any z and w, complex, not real, right? We started with the real. I mean, S U N was a Hermitian, right? But then once we arrived at the Lie algebra, we complexified it. But now, once you allow this, then you see I can make this guy to be zero. I can just choose uh, z equal to i w, no? Because now z's are complex, so there are no restrictions. So by choosing z equal to i w, I can make it just uh, in the top guy is not zero bottom is zero, right? But here we have anti-symmetric matrices. So, uh, I mean, if, uh, whatever it is, it's a uh, one, if there is a one here, there's a minus one there. In a transport, uh, okay. No matter whether you multiply by complex number or not, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You see, it stays always at this, you, you see, you cannot, uh, by complexification, you cannot make it uh, purely upper triangular. So there's a big difference. SUN was special. But uh, in building the roots, we always do the same thing, right? So uh, we complexify. Yeah. We complexify. That is uh, for the SUN. When you complexify, you could get something like this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You could get something. In SU, in SON, even if you complexify, you cannot get that. You have always anti-symmetric matrices. But the only thing is that now, when you say complexify, the complexification, this can be complex. So you have x and y can be complex, but then this will be minus x minus y. No? And when you compute the, when you construct the roots, you will find that these are not real; they will be complex. Okay. When you find these roots, they, some of them will be i, some of them will be not i, and so on. Yeah? But the for, formula for building the roots are the same, right? Uh, if you have the basis like in lambdas, lambda uh, three plus i times lambda five, for example, it will be a root, and it will look like this in the SO case? Yeah, I mean, yeah, SO case, yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't, I mean, it's all written there explicitly. I, I just don't remember the SO case. SLM, SO2. Yeah, the, it's given in the equation. Yeah, I give it like F. 13.35, 13.35 they have given, I mean the equations are, the, the roots are given, root vectors are given. Hmm? F itself is the anti-symmetric combination, Eij minus Eji. Huh? 
because every matrix has to be anti-symmetric. So you cannot just have Eij and this matrix Eij because Eij was only one element non-zero, Ith and J and Pro, right? But when you have Eij, it must come with a minus one, minus one there, which means the basis, I mean, the, the things will be of this type, Eij minus Ej. So you have to look at combinations of these guys, which gives you uh, eigenstate. Okay? And that is what is done in the, here. So it's a matter of sitting down and checking it. Huh? Please do check it at some point, uh, that these are indeed eigenstates. Huh? But here I just want, wanted to say that there's a big difference between SO2 and SO2 and plus one. You know, precisely because the, you can, uh, SO2n is of course a subalgebra of SO2n plus one, right? You can, if you have a 2n plus 2n, 2n plus one times 2n plus one anti-symmetric matrix, inside that there is sits a 2n by 2n anti-symmetric matrices, right? So you can think of it as a SO2n subalgebra sitting there. But then these guys, this 2n column vector will be what? Will be an SO2n vector, right? You see, when SO2n when acts on an n, n column vector, how does it transform? It transforms as a usual vector in an n-dimensional space, right? It just rotate and this n-dimensional vector. So this guy is an actually SO2n uh, SO2n vector a vector representation here. Right? So you will get uh, this ex extra ve vector representations there. That was an extra 2n, 2n we needed to get here. Um, uh, sorry, yeah, is good. yeah the, this was, you see here you had only this many roots, 2n times n minus 1, right? But here we have a 2n square roots, the difference is 2n. Those 2n's come from the uh, these ones, and these are just the weight. So uh, the extra things that you get are the weights of the vector representation of the SO2n. So the full SO2n plus one root uh, roots are the SO2n roots plus the weights of an SO2n uh, vector representation. So that's why they, they are two different uh, differences. In the Dinkin classification, the SO2n's are called uh, SO2n's are called DN series. And uh, these guys are called uh, B, uh, sorry, this SO2n plus 1 are called BN series. The N is uh, always a rank, huh? rank meaning the dimension of the Cartan sub algebra. As we saw, both are the same. But uh, this is, uh, so they're, they're different actually. And similarly, there's a discussion about the, <coughs> about the, about this uh, symplectic. In the symplectic, uh, you remember, that uh, we had this uh, SPN, it was a 2n by 2n matrix, but there were some definite conditions, right? If you look at the diagonal, if I remember correctly, if, if, if you can, I mean, now, yes, I have to look back, but maybe you, you, one of you remembers this. Uh, if you take SPN, so this is a 2n by 2n matrices, 2n, 2n, and you block, you take the block of n by n block. So this is n, n. n by n block, n by n block, n by n block, etc. And uh, uh, I don't remember. So if you put here A, this matrix, then here it was, I think, minus A, right? Minus A. Huh? Minus A. It was minus A. Minus A transpose. Minus A transpose. Good. Minus A transpose. And here, if it was B, then this was B transpose? No, Oh, uh, arbitrary, C, okay, B and C. So, but now again, let's see well, how we can construct, look at the Cartan subalgebra. You see, uh, again, let's look at the diagonal. The diagonal is, of course, in this complete diagonal matrix. Huh? So a diagonal matrix you can have, uh, so if I look at, so let's say the ith position, I, I put a one here. But then, because of this condition, again, in the ith position here, I mean, I meaning, so this is i f, so i f here, so the n plus i f, right? n plus i, because this is n by n blocks. n plus i f, <coughs> again, you should put a minus one, minus one here, because it's a minus a transpose. So once again, how many, there are, once you choose this, this is fixed. Right? So how many are there? There are n of them here, right? So those will be your h i, in this case. 
and this will again i going from one to n. That will be the that will generate the h. That will be the basis for h. And of diagonal, you have to again uh, the roots. You have to again look at uh, this uh, various combinations uh, of diagonal combinations, which of course should satisfy this condition, right? A is my a minus a transpose and so on and so forth. Right? And that's again the one. And that series is called uh, CN in the Dinkin classification. SUN plus one is called AN. In the Dinkin class. It's just a notation. Yeah, it's just a notation. I mean, nothing. Uh, they behave in a very different ways. That, that is the reason why you classify in certain, in certain ways. OK. Yeah, again, it's given the ABC minus A transpose. So it's given in the, the roots are given in 13.54, in you know, all the roots. Okay. So now let me go to the, uh, so the first part, uh, I will just go back to this, uh, uh, I mean, the next chapter. And, uh, Try to construct all the all the uh, algebras which have only two simple roots. So, which means we are looking at the Cartan subalgebra being two-dimensional. Hmm? You have already seen one of them, which is SU SU three, right? But now we are just from this general idea, we construct all the possible algebras. Hmm? Yeah, semi-simple, of course, everything is semi-simple right? algebra. Okay. And then after the break, we can come back and uh, we do. The, I do the spinner representations yeah, for SO2, SONs in general. Basically, I mean, the way that this uh, idea works is that, so once you have the set of simple roots, the simple roots, I mean, uh, before even discussing the rank two, let me just say a few words in general. So suppose there are, uh, this is, uh, uh, the Cartan subalgebra is dimension, uh, what should I call it? Do we use some particular term for that? I don't know, something. Suppose the dimension of Cartan subalgebra, uh, is k, let's say. Uh, then this sigma will, will have uh, the simple roots will be uh, k of them, right? Alpha i, i going from one to k. This will be the simple roots, right? I mean, the simple roots. Once you choose your regular element, element h naught, right? Or the hyperplane, basically the same as hyperplane in the in the h star space. Then you declare everything positive on one side, negative on the other side. And then these are simple roots are simply those positive roots which cannot be expressed as sums of two positive roots. Right? And then we sh uh, saw last time that with the using various theorems that the number of them are precisely k. Right? And we also have this important relation that alpha i, uh, alpha k uh, was always uh, less, than zero, less than or equal to zero. Right? And also things like alpha i minus alpha k is not, is not a root. Alpha i minus alpha g okay, for any any of these simple roots. There are some things that we, we saw. Now, uh, so what I mean, okay, so there are k of them, right? Uh, but then you need to specify. I mean, uh, so there are many different algebras with the same uh, Cartan subalgebra being the same k dimension, right? But there are clearly many different algebras. So you need to specify those numbers, uh, what we were calling n i j, which was two alpha i alpha j, I think, uh, let me use the notation that is written here. Let me, instead of n i j, let me define a j i, a, a i j, okay? Which is uh, defined like this. Okay. As I be, immediately you can see that this is nothing else but n j i. The one that we defined before, n j i, is like the supposition has been changed. But it's nothing, I mean, it's, it's just historically, I mean, so, some symbol came, uh, and you know, nothing, nothing. 
AIG. And uh, you know, you can, uh, so given this K of them, for each pair, you can compute these quantities. Each pair of IJ, you compute these quantities. And then uh, this is what is called the uh, elements of the Karta matrix. So you see that you can write down a K by K matrix, right? Uh, whose components, whose entries are A, I, J. So in the ith row and the jth column, you put this number A, I, J. So you'll get some matrix. And that matrix, K by K, K matrix, and that matrix is called Cartan matrix. That's called Cartan matrix. This is it. I mean, you need to just specify this matrix, and you can find the algebra. You can find the D algebra. But you cannot just choose an arbitrary combination. Okay? And I will tell you, uh, just give you one example. There is another way of writing this uh, Cartan matrix, and that's called Dinkin diagram. It's a very nice, uh, uh, I mean, you can just, it's sort of looking at this matrix and, you know, look, uh, look, I mean, there will be lots of numbers. It doesn't tell you much, right? So you want to some, have some language, I mean, some description where you just stare at it and immediately you know what you're talking about. Hmm? So what you do is that, so you have k roots, right? So for each of the roots, you put a circle, a small circle. Hmm? So there are k of them. So let's say these are k of them. Hmm? Okay. And then you compute this quantity, Aij. I mean, Aij, Aj I have given to you. But if you look at this Aij, Aj, I might take the product, which was nothing else but 4 alpha i alpha j square over alpha i alpha j, uh, alpha i alpha i, alpha j, alpha j. Remember, this is what we said was 4 cos square theta alpha beta, the angle between them, right? And uh, theta, in this case, let me just call it theta ij, the angle between the root alpha i and alpha j. Hmm? And we saw that this now, this can only be 0, 1, 2, or 3, right? 4, four means the same root, so, but we are talking about two different roots. Huh? So 0, 1, 2, or 3. Uh, so that's it. So this number is just uh, one, uh, these numbers. So what you do, so let's suppose here is my i, ith guy, and here is my j th guy. Hmm? Uh, alpha i root here, j alpha j, simple root here. Then you uh, join this with lines, and the number of lines is equal to these numbers. Okay? So for example, if the number is just one, then you just put one line. If number is zero, you don't connect it. You don't connect it. It's not connected by link. Okay? But the number of links between these two is a, a, that number. So if it is, for example, three, then I will have a three, three lines here. Yeah? So by just staring at it, you know that the, the angle between these two must be 135 degrees. Hmm? Yeah, sort of. uh, OK. Uh, then, uh, you know, we also saw that uh, the table we had written down, uh, if uh, this number was uh, whatever, nij, nji, uh, was uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3, uh, we had that, uh, so alpha, beta, I think we were just calling alpha, beta. I mean, this was for any root, not just for simple roots, it's for any root. But we are specializing it to alpha, i, alpha, j, that's all. And then uh, we had uh, that, uh, in, in this case, we had nothing to say. Uh, in this case, uh, it was alpha square was equal to beta square. Okay. Uh, in this case, it was beta square is equal to 2 alpha square. And then uh, here, beta square was 3 alpha square. Right? This, remember this table that we discussed yesterday? There was a table in the last chapter. Right? And this just comes from the thing that, I mean, uh, to get that, uh, one of these numbers, either nij or nji, um, uh, must be 1 and 2. Uh, one number must be 1, plus or minus 1, other must be plus or minus 2, right? So that tells you that the, the alpha, alpha, and beta, beta lengths, uh, the ratios are 2 or 3, uh, depending on which case. Hmm? If it is 1, the ratio is 1, so they are the same length squares, right? So, so, so this was the uh, possibilities. So you see, if, if it is 1, which means if it's only one line, if it is one, we are talking about one line here, right? So then there is nothing to, nothing more. The, if you have one, then there is no more information because you already know length squares are the same, right? But if it is two or three, then the length squares are not the same. If say this is the 
And so this is uh, alpha i, or alpha j, let's say, alpha j, and here is alpha i. Okay. Uh, so here is my j and i. So if, so it depends on which one. Either it could be alpha i squared is 2 alpha j squared, or it could be alpha j squared equal to 2 alpha i squared. So what you do is the shorter route, if, uh, suppose in this, the way I've written here, i is a shorter route. So you put you you fill up that uh, uh, that hole, huh? make it solid solid hole. Huh? Some notation. Uh, many uh, books will use the notation like this, like that. Huh? This uh, I think is more clear. You will not, never get confused. This says that the length of this guy is bigger than that. You know? I think that I, I prefer that notation you know? uh, because you always forget is a solid box short or long. You know? <laughs> but here it's unambiguous. Okay, so this, uh, that's it. This information you give. So, so uh, suppose there is some uh, situation where uh, you have, let's say, something like this. Okay. So k is 3, and I have these three roots, and I give you this diagram. Give, uh, give me this diagram, and then you can construct everything. You can, com com uh, you can construct the algebra, you know, starting from here, complete algebra. You, you can, fi first of all, find out how many roots are there. Because this tells you only the simple roots, right? Three simple roots here, but the total number of roots, how many are there, and the commutation relations between them. So, so basically, you construct the entire algebra. Hmm? However, it's also true that you cannot uh, just write down a. I mean, take for example, let's say again, I take a three three root case. I have three roots. Okay, could I have a situation like this? Right? Could you have a situation like this? I mean. Uh, a priori, I would say, yeah, okay. Well, this has, uh, this has, this, uh, uh, this is each of them. Each pair has uh, uh, is in this situation. So the angle, angle here that means is angle between these two is 120 degrees, right? Because that is the, that's the, when this happens when the angle is uh, two uh, two pi by three, right? So 120 degrees. This is also 120 degrees, and this is also 120 degrees. Okay. And the claim is it's impossible to draw something like this in three dimension, right? because I mean try to draw it. Let's see. So I, I take, take the first two, so alpha one and alpha two. I draw in a plane. Right? So alpha one is here and alpha two is here, and this is 120 degrees. Right? Now I want to draw an alpha three. You see alpha three. So this is alpha one, alpha two, alpha three. Alpha three is 120 with respect to alpha one as well as 120 with respect to alpha 2. So, now, so there should be some alpha 3. Try to see, think of some alpha 3 here in the third direction, which is 120 here and 120 there. They, it's not possible. In fact, the only possibility is if alpha 3 is here in the same plane. Okay? Because this you see 120, 120. The moment you start moving it up or down, uh, Above the blackboard or below the blackboard, these angles will, be, will be, become different, not 120 anymore. Okay. So the only way you can satisfy these conditions is if all the three roots were in the same plane. But then that's a contradiction, because simple roots are supposed to span the three-dimensional space. Okay. So that tells you this is not possible. This you could. This is inconsistent. Hmm? Uh, also 60 degrees. Yeah? No, because of this condition is less. Uh, so for them, always it will be negative. I mean, this number, uh, each of this aij will be negative number. No? So that is because of simple root. No? Simple roots have this property. Yeah, each of this, each of this aij uh, is going to be uh, negative. And, uh, I mean, less than or equal to zero for i not equal to j, right? Of course, if i is equal to j, then this can cancels and you get plus 2. So the diagonal of this matrix is always plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. And the off-diagonals are all non-positive. Zero or negative numbers, minus 1, minus 2, or minus 3. So this way, uh, this, this is a procedure. I mean, this is what you were saying, but geometrically. I mean, now, can you really draw uh, these things, you know? With, with the simple roots, with the specified angles, you know, and uh, and it turns out that sometimes it's not possible. This is an example. It's not possible. 
Uh, this way, uh, they came to this following conclusion, Dinkin, uh, I don't know, yeah, this is what's called Dinkin diagrams, that the only possibilities are, uh, so the, 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 the four, four, I mean, four infinite series, I mean, n, n can be anything, uh, and k can be anything, so that is what is called a k, or a n, I mean, like a k, so here you have k, simple, to, uh, the dimension is k, uh, I mean, dimension of the Cartan sub algebra, so you have k, and these are all just joint neighboring, uh, I mean, this is a neighboring ones, okay, like that. Uh, there are k of them. And these are nothing else, this is what is su k plus 1. That's, uh, uh, this is possible, this is allowed, I mean, geometrically you, you can see that this kind of thing is allowed. Hmm? You can draw. Then the other possibility is you have bk. Uh, this you can take to be uh, something like this. And then just the last one here, this is not the last one, here it branches out. It branches into like this. And that's the uh, other possibility. So total number of dots is k. That's the rank k. That's the dimension of the Cartan sub algebra. But the last guy, the here it kind of branches. That's, uh, and this again is an infinite series. Infinite meaning k can be anything. Yeah. Uh, we can also say the angle of uh, or the neighbor points, right? We cannot say anything. No, if, if they're not connected, if it is, let's look at these guys. This is not, there's no direct connection. Mm -hmm. So that means it's 90 degrees. Because the rule is that you connect, connect mm -hmm. between any two points, the number of lines you should put is this number. This number. So if there is no line, that means it's zero. Uh, it's uh, 90 degrees. Uh, so it's uh, yeah. This means it's 90 degrees, right? Pi by. Uh, if this is zero, then theta ij is uh, pi by two. Right? So if you try to draw the first three uh, dots, first and second has uh, 120. Second and uh, third is also 120. Also 120. But first and third is uh, so 90 degrees. Should be right angle. Yeah. It is fixed. Right? Exactly. That's right. So, yeah, th these are the only possibili possibilities. Eh? So, this is the other possibility. Okay. Uh, for example, I mean, again, if you try to uh, try to see if I could extend it, yeah? is it possible to do that? Again, you can come to contradiction that this is not possible to draw geometrically. Yeah? So things like that. I mean, it happens only for some special cases, but not for generic case generic case not possible. Then you have a CK. Um, no, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, this, this was BK. Sorry, this was DK. This is DK. Uh, then you have BK. Uh, these are all, you see, single lines. AK and BK are single lines. Uh, this is what is called, this is SO2K. SO2K here. Uh, BK is, uh, is again, like this here, just the last one, so, okay, this keeps going. And then the last one has two lines. Okay. There's two. This means that that's a stool, right? Um, two means what angle is 135 degrees. See? Okay. It's always obtuse because it's a negative. This I mean, is less than or equal to this. So angle is always greater than 90. Right? Uh, so 90 or greater than 90? 90 is when it is zero. Uh, but here this is 120 degrees, this is 135 degrees, and that's 150 degrees. Uh, so this means angle is uh, 135 degrees here. And of course, uh, then one of the, when it's like this, the ratio of the length squares of this guy will be 2, right? This uh, 2. But there's a question here. Is this the shorter one or that's the shorter one? We don't know, right? These lengths are all the same. Whenever there's a single line, single line means we are in this situation, lengths are all the same. All these lengths are the same. But the last one, either this is length, uh, twice the length square of that, or that is twice the length square of that. Right? So you have two possibilities. One, like this, and other, same diagram, but the arrow pointing this way. So the length square of this guy is bigger. Okay. I think one of them is uh, BK, other is called CK. Now, which one? Uh, I don't remember now. Let me see. Mm, CK 
CK is the one, uh, sorry, BK is the one where this is a shorter root. The last one is a shorter root, so this is indeed. And CK is the one where the last one is a longer root. Yeah? So this is SO2 n plus 1, 2K plus 1. And this is SPK. So this is a classical linear algebra. Then there are a few exceptions. Uh, I'm just stating this without giving a proof. Uh, actually, in the notes also, there is no proof of that. Uh, I just gave you one example of this because it was easy to show that there was it's not, not possible to draw. Huh? But all these proofs are done by basically saying that, uh, by basically looking, proving that uh, some diagram is not possible, some diagram is possible, like that. Huh? Purely from geometric considerations. There's nothing deeper, no deeper reason. Huh? Uh, and then there are some exceptional ones uh, which are. Uh, It's not even ah, yeah, there's some exceptional ones. There is one uh, which is like this, three lines. With, with the three lines, this is the only possibility. You know, with this uh, last one, uh, cos square theta equal to three, uh, four cos square theta equal to three, uh, th there is only one possibility. And so there's only rank two, not possible. Meaning, if, for example, you, you can, as a, just as a, for fun, you can try to do something like this. Suppose I draw something like this. Huh? So there's a three lines here and one line here. You should be able to prove geometrically that's not possible. Okay. So this means that this has 150 degrees uh, and that is 120 degrees. And between these two is 90 degrees because there's no, no line here. Huh? Uh, you should be able to prove that uh, is a not possible. Geometrically you can try to see. So one can prove that the only thing which has a line three, three lines, uh, it has something which is just like that. It cannot, nothing is, this is not connected to anything, it's not connected to anything. And this is what called G2. Okay. Then there is the example F4. F4 is uh, like this here. Where, okay, uh, this could be this, this. It doesn't matter, there are only two of them. So whether it is you change the arrow doesn't matter. That's just renaming alpha one and alpha two. Also here it doesn't matter which way because diagram is purely completely symmetric. Uh, and then uh, there are e six. So this is f four. Uh, then you have lines like this here. E six. This is e six. And. Uh, e seven, and finally e eight. This is uh, e six. Sorry, this is e six, e seven, e eight. That's it. So those are the classical algebras that you already know. Uh, these are new algebras, which, mm -hmm. which, you, which do not come from the classical symmetries. So, so these are the things. Some of these are playing, I mean, no one thought that one would ever need such these algebras. But in string theory, these algebras play a very important role in string theory. They come naturally in string theory. E8 particularly, but all of them come naturally. Because uh, all of them, if E8 is there, I mean, this is a subalgebra of that. This is a subalgebra of that. So then naturally, you know, everything else comes. And the G2 comes uh, in the, what is called M theory. M theory. F4 I have not seen. I mean, I have never seen F4 playing any role. You know? So who knows, you know. <laughs> Someday that will become very fashionable. Who knows, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, okay, we, today, no, okay, then, let me just go back to the, uh, to the rank 2. Just to exhaust all the cases of rank 2. So how do I construct? I, I claim that if you give me this number, this this uh, matrix, kappa matrix, you know, meaning the relationship between the different uh, roots, simple roots, then you can construct it, right? That was a claim. So let us just try to see this in the rank two case. So let's say lo look at the rank. Rank, I just say, I mean, uh, rank is the by definition dimension of. Uh, Cartan subalgebra. Mm -hmm. 
And I remind you that they are always talking about semi-simple. I mean, there's nothing, right? And actually, in this classification that I have given here, this is for simple, not semi-simple. Because you know, semi-simple means it's a direct sum of simple algebras. Mm -hmm. So you take, uh, semi-simple can be constructed by taking one of these algebras, I mean, two of these algebras, and put them together without, they commute, mutually commute. So semi-simple is just direct sums of simple. These were simple algebras. Uh, OK, so let's take now rank two case. So I have two roots, alpha, alpha 1 and simple roots, alpha 1 and alpha 2, two simple roots. So rank equal to 2, okay? simple roots. Now we have what possibilities? You can have uh, alpha 1, I mean, the, uh, one possibility is that um, uh, this number, a12, equal to 0. I mean, this is the only information, A12 and A21, right? These are the only possibilities. Uh, because, uh, the, I mean, the diagonal of the A matrix, diagonal one is always 2, right? You can see from here. Um, I mean, yeah, Aij was 2 alpha i alpha j divided by alpha j alpha j. Right? So if i is equal to j, this cancels and then you get two. So that part is all. So the only non-trivial information is here, A12 and A21. So let's suppose A12 and A21 were zero. This one case. Okay. Then uh, that means 90 degrees, right? So I can draw, you have alpha 1 and uh, alpha 2. Okay. And uh, you see, they, they now look at the, this information. Remember, this. what is this information, this number? This number is let's say p minus q, where you are looking at the alpha j string passing through alpha i, right? So this is the alpha j uh, minus, no, uh, which one is it, which one? Is it minus q or minus p? I'll just get confused with that in the chain. I mean, alpha j, uh, no, plus uh, probably minus p, alpha j minus p, right? alpha j minus p, al uh, sorry, alpha i minus p alpha j, all the way up to, up to alpha i plus q alpha j, right? That is the alpha j string. So this is the alpha j string through alpha i. Okay. Now, since alpha i and alpha j are simple roots, right, the negative cannot be there. Because alpha i minus alpha j doesn't exist, right? So this string will start from, so p is equal to 0. That's in particular that means, right? Since these are simple roots, p is necessarily equal to 0. So whatever this number is, it's actually computing q, this number. The, because p is 0, so this number directly gives me q, right? This is, of course, a negative number, so that is consistent. So a negative number is negative in number. So they said, so if it is zero, that means Q is also zero, right? Because we are saying this is zero. So this is also zero. That means uh, there is no string there. I mean, string is just uh, nothing. It's, uh, just alpha, j, just sitting alpha i, nothing else. So in particular, this means the alpha i, alpha j is equal to zero. I mean, x alpha, i, sorry. x alpha i, x alpha j commuted to be zero because because if it was not zero, it should have been x of alpha i plus alpha j. But alpha i plus alpha j is not a root. Because we say q is also zero. Right? From this. So p is for sure zero by definition for any two simple groups. Huh? The question is what is q? But if a, a12 is zero, then that tells me that q is zero. Okay? So this this alpha i, nothing alpha i plus nothing exists. So so this this commute. So alpha 1 and alpha 2 commutes. Okay. Uh, so therefore, what we have, of course, there will be minus alpha 2 and minus alpha 1. But these are just one SU2 subalgebra here and one SU2 subalgebra here. That's it. It's a direct sum of two SU2 subalgebras. So this is not a this is not a, a simple algebra, it's a semi-simple. Right? So this algebra is nothing else but SU2 direct sum SU2. So that was very simple. So the alpha, so zero is not a very interesting case. Now let's look at the next one, which is the one. We have only four, uh, four possible, 
possibilities. So let's look at the one. So if you look at now a12 equal to a21 equal to uh, minus 1. So this means, okay, 120 degrees. So let's draw it like this. So we have alpha 1 here and alpha 2 here. So now let's look at the alpha 2 chain, or alpha 1 chain, as we have written here, uh, through alpha 2. Okay. Uh, then uh, th this, uh, the fact that this number is uh, minus 1 and p is 0, we are saying that q is 1, right? Mm -hmm. Q is 1. So, uh, so we start from there. Then you have alpha 2 plus alpha 1 is a root. Right? Alpha 2 plus alpha 1 is a root because P, uh, Q, Q is 1. And that's it. it uh, not 2. Q is not 2. So there it stops there. That is that. And then of course, and that's it. Similarly, if you, if you look at the alpha 2 chain through alpha 1, is the same result because again q is one because it's minus one again both both numbers are minus one it's again uh, one so you'll get alpha two plus alpha one but that's a, alpha one plus alpha two which is the same you come to the same point and then that's it, it stops and that is you know su three right these are the positive roots and then you have corresponding negative roots that's su three algebra so this also we know so now the next question is when it is two when this number is 2. So we can choose, let's say, A12. In fact, let me use the same notation here. So A12, I choose to be minus 2. And A21 equal to minus 1. I mean, necessarily one of the number has to be one, minus one, right? Because the product product of these two numbers is uh, zero, one, two, or three, right? But all these numbers are prime numbers. So you want to write as a product of two integers. So one of the integers has to be minus one, since we are only allowed minus, no pluses, no? Because they are simple roots, so they're all minus. So one of them has to be minus one. Other can be anything, minus two, minus one, minus three. Okay. Uh, so that means uh, we have, uh, so the relation is, so A12, so A12, remember what was, this was a uh, minus 2, this was a A12 is 2, uh, alpha 1 dot alpha 2 by alpha 1 alpha 1, and this was 2, alpha 1 alpha 2 by alpha 2 alpha 2. So we are saying this is minus 2, and that's minus 1. So clearly, uh, alpha 2, length of alpha 2, uh, no, so length, uh, length of alpha 2 is bigger, right? Uh, is, that, is that correct? Or yeah, it just it states that 2 alpha 1 alpha 1 is equal to, uh, 2 alpha 1 alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 alpha 2, correct? Just multiply this here, multiply that there. But these two are the same, so those two are the same. Right? Do we have to write alpha 2, alpha 2, and alpha 1, alpha 1? Maybe. Uh, is that so? Maybe how it was defined? Uh, okay, so which one? You mean here I should write as alpha 2, alpha 2? Maybe, yeah? A1, 2. Is that correct? Uh, because it is, uh, uh, unfortunately, the, our convention, this is what we were calling N21. Remember, this we were calling as N21. So I don't know. I mean, yeah. But anyway, if, if so, then just, uh, just, in, just reverse the two things. I mean, exchange one and two. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So this uh, is a story. So now, so let's see. So what is the, so of course, let's talk, write down, construct all the positive roots. Huh? So for sure, alpha 1, alpha 2 exist, of course. Um, then, now let's look at the level 1, uh, level 2. By the way, level I can define as the following way. Since I know that a positive root, any positive root will, can be written as, so any root, say, beta belonging to delta plus, can be written as 
beta equal to sum ni alpha i, where ni's are strictly greater than or equal, I mean greater than or equal to zero. There's no negative number. Hmm? It's all possible. This is one of the theorems we proved yesterday. Then it has to be all uh, greater than or equal to zero. So, I mean, some coefficients may be zero, but no coefficient will be negative. Hmm? That's a positive rules. So the level, you can, so since there's nothing negative here, you can define a concept of level. Level is simply sum over n. So level of beta is sum over n. I mean, you can define, because there's never a, neg a negative number. If there was a negative number, this notion would not be very useful. But uh, so you, you can define this level. Uh, so you can uh, start classifying your positive roots by their level. So this guy is your level one, right? Uh, so this was level one. So now look at the level two. So level two, we have only one possibility, level two. Well, the only possibility is alpha one plus alpha two, because you cannot have two, two alpha, two alpha one. Right? I mean, other possibility would have been 2 alpha 1 or 2 alpha 2. But we know that if alpha is a root, 2 alpha is not a root. Right? So this is not possible. So there's only one possibility here. And this is, of course, allowed from here because this is telling me uh, this is, uh, what is that? This is the, uh, this is, uh, which one? I always get confused with. This is Q1, right? So this is <coughs> Q1. So Q1 is 2 and Q2 is 1. P is 0. Remember, P is 0. Right? This, because simple roots, P is always 0. Because alpha i minus alpha j is not a root. So Q, then it cannot go in negative sign. The string will not go in the negative sign. It only go in the positive sign. And this is Q1 is 2 and Q2 is uh, 1. Uh, so this is certainly OK. right? So this this is appears in both these both these strings. If you look at this guy, this is the alpha two string uh, starting from alpha through going through alpha one. Well, Q two is one, so that is certainly there, right? After that, it will not be. There will be no alpha one plus two alpha two because Q two is one, right? I mean, this tells me that the string is alpha one plus goes up to alpha one plus Q two alpha two. Uh, whatever up, up to huh? and this one is telling me that uh, this string alpha 1 string through alpha 2 goes from alpha 2 to alpha 2 plus q, q1 alpha 2 plus q1 alpha 1 right? that is a string okay so that's level 2 so level 2 is okay level 3 level 3 now we have two possibilities I can have uh, 2 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 or I can have alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2, right? A priori, I mean, just by looking at the numbers, I level 3. You cannot have 3 alpha 1 or 3 alpha 2 because 3 is not allowed. Three, I mean, if there's a root, you cannot have a number. This is not, so then, uh, now let's see, is it possible? This is not possible, why? Because we said Q2 is 1, so this, the length of this chain, this alpha 2 string, is only 1. I mean, it goes, it does, cannot go beyond that, right? So this is not allowed. What about this guy? This guy is perfectly okay because Q1 is 2, so it goes up to alpha 2 plus 2, alpha 1. Right? So this is okay. And level 4, let's see level 4. Well, we have here, so I can add something. So for example, can I have 3 alpha 1 plus alpha 2? There's one possibility or I can have 2 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2. These are the two possibilities, right? Because at level 3, I have only this guy. So what to, to this, I can add alpha 1 or alpha 2, no? So these are the two possibilities. This is not allowed because the Q2 is 2, not 3, right? So this is not allowed. What about this guy? This guy is not allowed because this is the same as 2 of alpha 1 plus alpha 2. But alpha 1 plus alpha 2 was already a root. And therefore, the, twice that root does not exist. So this guy goes out. So that's it. So at level 4, uh, I mean, this guy goes out. Right? So level 4 there is, is empty. And therefore, everything else is empty. Because level 5, you should make from start from level 4 and go to the, but since there's no it's empty set, okay, it stops. 
So what is this? Now let's draw, draw the diagram. The diagram is uh, then so we draw, draw like this. So alpha one, uh, I draw the alpha one is a shorter root, right? Mm -hmm. Alpha one is a shorter root, and then uh, since this this is two, this product is two. Uh, theta is 135 degrees, right? Angle is 135 degrees. So if I draw a particular, so it's exactly bisecting this 45. I mean this is 45 degrees, right? And I draw, draw it like that. And one can see if the length square is two times, if this length square is two times that, that means this length is root two times that. Square root of two times that, right? But that's exactly, it says that it is just the, and if you take this length, put that there, then, no, then this length will be exactly the square root of two times that. Right? I mean, you see, this is a, if you draw a square, uh, with this length, square, then the diagonal will be exactly square root of two times that. No? So it's, uh, it's this. Okay. So this is alpha one, alpha two. Now what we have, at the first level we have alpha two plus alpha one, so we come back here, right? This is exactly there. And then uh, at the third level we have two alpha one plus alpha two. So this is alpha two plus alpha one, and then one more alpha one I add, so it comes here. This is alpha two plus two alpha one, and that's it. These are the positive roots. And then of course we have negative roots, uh, all of them. So here, here. here. That's the root. So here, so what is happening here? If you look at this as you do subalgebra, then uh, there are these guys remaining outside this as you do subalgebra and these guys, right? Mm -hmm. But each of them is a triplet. Mm -hmm. This is a triplet because this raising operator will move you from here to there, here to there. Lowering operator of this guy x minus alpha one will move you back down, right? So this will be a spin one representation of that. Similarly, this one will be under spin one representation of that. On the other hand, if you look at this as to subalgebra, so alpha two, this is minus alpha two. So this is to subalgebra. Uh, you have, uh, there is this here, uh, this is a, then if you look at this guy, these are all singlets of the SU2, right? Because this doesn't go, this doesn't go anywhere there, here, right? So this is a singlet, that's a singlet. But this is a doublet. Uh, no, sorry, this is a doublet. And that's a doublet, right? Because x alpha two acting or there, it will take you there. Right? Similarly, it acts, acting there, it will take you there. Right? So this will be two doublets. <coughs> so the structure is a, something like this here, and this is what is this SO five algebra, or equivalently SP SP one SP one. They're the same. Uh, SP two, sorry, SP two. They're the same because uh, remember in the Dinkin classification, the difference between uh, uh, SO and SP was in the arrow here or there, right? But if it's a rank, this is a rank two, rank two. Then there are only two points, this and that. So what's the difference? I mean, one of them is shorter, other is longer. You are just labeling one of them alpha one, other is alpha two. But you can rename them, no? So the same. So SO SP two is the same as SO five at the level of Lie algebra. That's the same. So this is the uh, real algebra of the SO5. And by, once you have this diagram, then you know you already you can get all the all the competition relations, right? Because you already know the general structure: x alpha, x beta uh, will be equal to n alpha beta, x alpha plus beta, if alpha plus beta is a root, if it's, it belongs to delta, and then you have x alpha x, uh, I mean, if this and alpha plus beta is not zero. If you have x minus alpha, then you will get the Cartan generator h alpha. I mean, times some number, some proportional to h alpha. And if it's not a root, it is zero. I mean, if alpha plus beta is not a root. So once you have this structure, this uh, structure here, you immediately see what uh, the computational. These numbers, 
these numbers are not very important huh? because you see this number depends on I, mean, I can uh, multiply this by some number multiply this by some number multiply this by number this number so the absolute value of these numbers are not very important I mean you can uh, however uh, there are certain conditions that come from Jacobi identity you know so you can start uh, choosing some numbers here and then you have to just make sure that they are consistent with the Jacobi identity hmm? but, but the, there is a theorem that I mean you can always choose some n alpha beta non-zero n alpha beta such that Jacobi identity is satisfied hmm? that is uh, okay so this is the other thing and now the last one uh, so we have covered all the rank, I mean the last rank two case where uh, we take this guy to be three okay and the other one uh, the one of them has to be one anyway so I call this one one and that one three so now q1 is three and q2 is one so let's see what happens again we start from here and and uh, alpha one alpha one uh, alpha 2 alpha 2 is 3 times alpha 1 alpha 1 so the length of alpha 2 is root 3 times length of alpha 1 okay. so once again let's start from rank, uh, level 1 so level 1 we have of course alpha 1 and alpha 2 2, two roots level 2 there is only one root, one root alpha 1 plus alpha 2 now level 3 we have two possibilities. I could have 2 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 or alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2. Okay. Now alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 is not there because q2 is 1. Right? q2 is 1 so this cannot be 2 here. Mm -hmm. no? So this is not there. But this is perfectly okay because q1 is all the way up to 3. No? So this is certainly there. Now level 4 level 4 uh, so we have uh, possibilities 3 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 or uh, uh, let's see uh, or what I could have you can have 2 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 so I, I started with this and I add 1 alpha 1 here or 1 alpha 2 the alpha 2 there now this is not possible because this will be 2 times alpha 1 plus alpha 2 so this is not possible hmm? so we have this and this is perfectly okay because q1 is 3. Right? Now let's look at level 5. Uh, level 5, so, okay. sorry, I missed something. Yeah, maybe level 4. No, no, it's in 3 or 4. It's not. Yeah, level 5, uh, we have two possible. I can add alpha 1 or alpha 2 to that to begin with. I have 4 alpha 1 plus uh, alpha 2 or 3 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2. Okay. This one is not allowed because this would say the q1 should be greater than or equal to 4. Well, not possible because it's 3 here. So this is allowed. But here, this one, uh, I mean, there is at, at the moment there is no particular. Uh, uh, there is no particular thing. The only thing that now we need to check, yeah, we need to check the following. Uh, if I take this guy, let's call this guy beta. Okay. Mm -hmm. And consider an alpha 2 string, right? Because after all, this I obtained by adding an alpha 2 to that. So you want to look at an alpha 2 string passing through beta. So you want to look at 2 beta dot alpha 2 over alpha 2 alpha 2 and see what is this number because this is going to give me the appropriate p minus q right and that from there i can try to see how long is the string alpha 2 string passing from beta right so but that we know because beta is 3 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 so what is this quantity so this quantity is 3 uh, uh, sorry 2 of 3 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 comma alpha 2 divided by alpha 2 alpha 2 Let's open that. This is linear, linear. So this is two times three, six. Uh, alpha one, alpha two, over alpha two, alpha two, plus two 
alpha 2 alpha 2 or alpha 2 alpha 2 which is just 2 they cancel so you get 2 and this number we know this number is uh, minus 3 minus 3 half right this number so we substitute that here so that makes it minus 3 minus 3 and this is 2 plus 2 which is minus 1 okay so so we are saying this p minus q is minus 1 on the other hand, let's see, uh, so this is what? So we are looking at the beta is this, right? You see, uh, if p is, suppose p is uh, greater than 0, okay? Then beta minus alpha 2 should have been there, correct? But beta minus alpha 2 would be simply 3 alpha 1, which cannot be, right? So p is 0, that tells me that q is exactly 1 okay so which means th this, uh, this plus alpha 2 exists and that's exactly that huh? okay so this exists that's it and then now if you add something to this I mean question now is a six a level 6 two possibilities I can either add an alpha 1 there or add an alpha 2 there if I add an alpha 1 here it becomes 4 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 which is 2 times that, right? So that cannot exist. And if you add an alpha 2 here, it becomes 3 times alpha 1 plus alpha 2, 3 times that, that cannot exist. So it ends here. And then now let's draw this. So this is all. This is all the positive roots and then the negative roots are this. So if I draw this now, uh, so here, so I draw again alpha 1 here, let's say. Okay. And now the angle is 135, 150 degrees because it's uh, 3, right? Cos square theta is uh, uh, 3 over 4, cos square. So cos theta is root 3 by 2, Mi minus root 3 by 2 because all negative. So that's why it is, um, how to draw it, I mean, no. uh, it's 30 degrees. Uh, I mean, here, 30 degrees this way. and the length square, this length is root 3 of that length. So can someone tell me what is that? I mean, if uh, this is the same length as alpha, so this is minus alpha 1, right? Uh, root 3 times that will be what? Uh, what is root 3 times that? I mean, this angle is 30 degrees. Uh, so. Uh, this length divided by that length is uh, cosine 30, right? So it's um, so that's cosine 30 is root 3 by 2, right? So root 3. So I need to go two 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 units here, correct? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So two. If this is one unit, yeah. then this is say one unit length. Then I have to go to two units here, and then extend it to that point. So I mean this this projection. So this will be alpha 2. Did I make a mistake? Root 3 by 2, right? So it's correct, right? I mean, this uh, cosine 30 is root 3 by 2. Correct. This has to be less than 1. cannot be root 3. So, yeah. OK. So that's that. I started with this. So this is level 1. Now, at level 2, we have alpha 1 plus alpha 2. So I just go, I add to this, this vector. So when I add that, I will come here, right? Just about that. I'm not changing this vertical. I'm only adding this vector, no? So it will be like this. So this is alpha 2 plus alpha 1. And then uh, you have alpha 2 plus 2 alpha 2. This is the 2 alpha 1. That is at level 3. Level 4, I have alpha 2 plus 3 alpha 1, which comes here. And something is wrong here. Now I think this cannot be right. Should be the half, right? Eh? Should be the half. It's the half. Yes. One and a half. Yeah. Ah, okay, good. Yeah, that that is correct. Yeah. Half half one. Yeah. This is not correct. So it's what I have to do is to take this one unit and then half of that.
because uh, the length of alpha 1 divided by the length of alpha 2 is cosine of the alpha 1 by alpha 2, yeah, correct. So it should be half the length of alpha, of alpha 1 divided by alpha 2 is the square root of 3 over 2. And uh, so I mean this would be 3 alpha 1, 3, 3, 3 half, right? So let's say alpha 1 length is 1. I suppose. So this length is 3 half. Uh, so this divided by the length of alpha 2 is uh, root 3 by 2, right? That's correct. Yeah, 3 half square root of 3 should be the length. Huh? Sorry? Uh, this is confusing. Sorry, what the, the left hand ah. length should be, I guess, 3 half times root 3. I mean, we have that the length of alpha 2 the length of alpha 2 is root 3 times alpha 1. We need the hypotenuse to be 3? No. I mean, this is correct, it seems. This is the square of. Uh, this is square, right? The length square is equal to 3 times. So length is root 3 times, no? So this is root 3 times alpha 1. Alpha 1, we say length is 1. So there is a root 3. So this is correct. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So this is correct now. Yeah. yeah. So this is 3 half. This is 3 half length. And then I go uh, uh, 30 degrees here. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, that's. So, but now it's uh, of course different because when I add, so this is alpha two. Then alpha two plus alpha one. So you see, this was half unit. So when I add that up, I will come to this midpoint here and vertically up. Huh? So that's that. And then alpha two plus al two alpha one. This is again, so you're adding one from half. So this was the point half. This is three half. Right? This was one. And this is again half. And that is one. So this comes here. And then finally, alpha two plus three alpha one, which is here the three half. Yeah? I think it's a diagram. Yeah. Okay. So this, these are the, all the roots here. Uh, but then at level 5, I have also 3 alpha 1 plus 2, al 2 alpha 2. Right? Well, two alpha, 3, 3 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 is what? Is the sum of these two, right? This is alpha 2 plus 2 alpha 1. Uh, and this one. So you add that up, right? So you will come here somewhere. You add this, this vector and that vector. Uh, then that should be there. So this is the so the roots are here. These are the positive. This is the positive root. This, 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 and that. And the negative roots I can draw also. So negative roots are okay. There is this here, and then uh, there is this here, uh, and uh, there is this here, this here, this here, and this here. So that's a picture. So you see, this is a. If I just join these lines, uh, you find a nice star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so that's a picture. That's a G two diagram. This is a G two algebra, which was not uh, just not a classical D algebra. It's a. You know, but by general classification, you see, you, you can construct it. So no one gave you a matrix representation of the G2. Of course, once you know this, you can construct the representations. This is 14 dimensional because uh, you see how many, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six positive roots and six negative roots. So total non-zero roots is 12 and the two Cartan sub algebra. Cartan sub algebra. So, so it's 14 dimensional Lie algebra. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is uh, quite uh, So this way, you, you can in general construct everything. Still, all the slices that we can get with the roots uh, are SU2 slices, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, so yeah, you can take any SU2, I mean, any given any root, any root, say for example, this root, uh, there will be an SU2 here. Huh? Then you can decompose everything. So for example, these four guys will be a spin three half representation. There will be a quartet. 
Uh, that will be a singlet. Uh, this will be again a quartet, and that will be a singlet. Or choose, for example, uh, this SU2 subalgebra. Okay. Then there are two doublets here. Actually, four, four doublets. This one is a doublet, this is a doublet, this is a doublet, that's a doublet, and these two are singlets. So this way you can decompose. Uh, with respect, to every, every alpha defines, defines an SU2 subalgebra. That is what is nice about it. Sometimes we use uh, for lowering operators, two different lowering operators. Yeah, two different? Lowering operators. For example, the last um, bublet, we do... Which one? Uh, which one? Alpha 2 plus? You mean this guy? Alpha 2 plus 2 alpha 1? The last one. The last bublet. Yeah. Uh, two, ver for two vertical. You, you, uh, alpha 2 plus uh, 3 alpha 1. And but it's negative. Then you get the fruit of yeah, this one. This one is just minus alpha 2, right? I mean, this is the opposite of that. Yeah. Minus alpha 2. And uh, so, whereas this object is, this is adding the two things. So, 2 alpha 2 plus uh, 3 alpha 1, right? So, when I apply the lowering operator, I just take this and subtract that. No? Mm -hmm. So, when you subtract that, 3 alpha 1 cancels, and you get alpha 2 minus 2 alpha 2. Which is that? Geometrically, uh -huh. it's like. Uh, I mean, this vector. This vector you're subtracting. So oh, okay. you're going vertically now. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah, so okay, this is. So I think maybe we'll just have a quick break. And uh, 15 minutes break, maybe. Mm -hmm. huh? 15 minutes break, I, or even, ten, I mean, I can just go and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> we, can, uh, we can continue with that. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we can stop this here, and let's go to the spinner representation of SO. SO huh? Just the gamma matrices, to, to discuss that a little bit. It's not in the, in the notes, but, uh, and uh, it will also not be part of the exam, but just as a kind of a general knowledge, I mean general. Mm -hmm. so, so uh, what you are ten, ten minutes or uh, two two thirty two two forty less two forty five less yeah two forty five ah to pause pause not to because she said not to stop this one huh? okay. So now let's go to the spinner representations of SO, SO groups. So you remember from the, uh, in the Lorentz, I mean, the, what Eddie already told you, that was in four dimension, Lorentz group. And uh, what you had was, uh, uh, basically, uh, you want to write down a square root of the Laplace, right? Dirac equation is like the square root of the Laplace, square root of the, uh, say, this equation for the scalars, right? Uh, it's, Laplacian is this, right? Usually, I don't know whether he was using the symbol, the box. Okay? The box is nothing else but d mu d mu. So, you want to write down a square root of that, to write down a, a Dirac equation. And the way you write the, the, this operator is in the Dirac equations is that you define a d slash, which is nothing else but gamma mu d mu. Huh? Uh, gamma mu are some matrices. Uh, uh, gamma mu d mu, which this gamma ma matrices satisfy what is called the Clifford algebra. The algebra is this gamma mu, gamma mu. Anti-commutator, not commutator, but anti-commutator, is uh, two uh, eta mu mu. This was the, this was the, yeah, you remember that right from the uh, Eddie's lecture? Or did he not do it yet? He has, he has not done it yet. He has done it. Okay. So if you have this algebra, then you see immediately that this slash square is a box. Because I mean, you just take you have gamma mu, 
uh, gamma nu, d mu, d nu, but uh, this is uh, symmetric, d mu, d nu is symmetric, so you can symmetrize nu nu, so this is the same as one half of that, right? and then, then you use that, so you just get eta mu nu, d mu, d nu, which is the box. So the model is, is the statement is there. That's it. so you're taking a square root. So this is the general idea. So what we want to now do is uh, take uh, uh, this uh, algebra in general. Uh, well, first of all, by the way, the, uh, this is because eta mu because we are doing Minkowski space, Lorentzian metric, right? But you could have equally well done it instead of this. Instead of this, you replace this by two delta mu nu, right? There's not a big difference. Uh, because okay, suppose you found a solution for this, right? Then you can get find a solution for this just by putting an i in front of. It. Suppose the metric eta mu nu. I don't know what signature uh, Eddie was using. Was it using? Was he using eta zero zero equal to minus one, and eta i i equal to plus one? Where i is other space or other way around? Yeah. Okay. If it's other way around, doesn't matter. Then uh, if it's other way around. Then uh, suppose you found a solution to this equation for, for, the, for this etas, and we have, you have gamma 0 and gamma i. Then you just multiply this gamma i by i. Okay. Then you, you get the equation for delta mu. Right? You're just multiplying some, some of the gamma matrices by i. Okay. So it is, I mean, you might as well just work with the delta mu. Hmm? And then you can appropriately multiply by i to get to the Lorentzian signatures. So we'll, we'll work with this, uh, this delta mu nu. And now the question that we are asking is, uh, if I look at gamma mu, or it doesn't matter, let me write down, gamma nu, anti-commutator, or let me now call everything ij, right? since everything is Euclidean. Okay? So this is delta ij, two delta ij. So the problem that we are asking is the following. Now ij could be in some uh, n-dimensional space. So i and j, could be from R, from 1 to n. Okay. n equal to 4 is what Eddie described, right? But now let's just do it for general. So this way we will find uh, in the experience for SON. Okay? Uh, what uh, Eddie was doing was, uh, this was this for the, I mean here, it was spinners for SO3, 3,1, or if you put, make it delta mu nu by multiplying by i, it will be SO4. But now we do it for general, general n. Yeah. Well, first of all, before doing that, let us let's do it before doing all the general case. Let's do for e1 number. So suppose uh, dimension is e1. Yeah. So we have SO2n. Okay. Then we can go to 2n plus one in a straightforward actually. So you want to find this, and the question we are asking is that. Okay, so gammas are some matrices. Can I say something about how big are these matrices? You know, what's the dimensionality of this matrix? Okay. In, in a four dimension, it, gamma was a four by four matrices, right? SO4 in what uh, Eddie was describing. But now if I have SO2n, what is the dimension? What, what, how big the matrix is going to be? Because the, if the matrix is suppose turns out to be k by k, right? Then the spinner will be a k column vector. So this will tell you the dimension of the spinner. No? So, so this is the idea. So we want to find, uh, so these gammas are, uh, I mean the dimension of the gamma, matri gamma matrices, of gamma mu matrices. Because then, the, then we, that from there we can find out what is the spinner representation. Okay, so the way to do this, is again uh, using the standard, uh, I mean, kind of uh, the harmonic oscillator algebra. I mean, more or less, not exactly, more or less. Uh, so, you know, like I mean, all of these cases, what we were doing, I mean, in the way we were constructing representations, we were always, uh, either what we were doing is we were kind of uh, taking some highest weight, right? Highest weight state, okay? And, uh, uh, from this highest weight state, then you start applying the you know other things. But uh, highest weight means uh, you impose some conditions, right? That something annihilates some state, right? 
And then you apply the other objects to get the whatever you have there. So here I want to impose, so I want to start with some state, let's say I just call it zero. It's not, it's not a quantum mechanical vacuum state or anything like that. I'm just giving a name to it, some zero state, which is annihilated by some of the gamma matrices. So some gamma matrices annihilated. The, so question is, I mean, how can, so what is the best way to choose this maximum? We want to do it uh, maximally, you know, maximal possible uh, conditions I can put on this state, and then I construct everything else, okay. by applying on this state the remaining gamma matrices. Okay. So we want to find uh, the maximal set, the maximal set. maximal set of such gamma matrices which annihilate. Now, uh, I mean, first of all, let's see, I cannot for sure uh, Im impose that all gammas annihilate. Is it possible to impose this condition? Can I impose this condition for all i? That's clearly not, not possible, right? Because, I mean, supposing this was, a, so as we prove by contradiction, supposing that this was possible, well, then let's multiply by gamma j gamma i, zero, this is also zero, because original object was zero. Uh, I mean, this means, this is not zero, so this is not, we can, I mean, this is some state, I don't know, let, let me not put here v, uh, let me not put here zero, we call v, this is a number, I mean, this is just a zero vector in the some Hilbert space, some, some vector space, vector space spanned by these column vectors, that's a zero vector. Okay. So, uh, this will be also zero then, because if this was zero, I just multiplying by another operator, gamma j. But that, that, then this means, this also implies that the anti-commutator gamma j, gamma i on v equal to zero. Right? I mean, just exchange i and j and add that up, you get this equation. But that's a contradiction because this, I know, is 2 delta ij. Okay. So this gives me 2 delta ij. Uh, 2 delta ij times the identity of the ratio right here. Identity of the hmm? 2 delta ij times the identity acting on v. And that cannot be 0. This is not 0. If the original state v was not 0 state, 0 vector, then this cannot be 0. Right? So this is contradiction. So surely I cannot impose this condition for all i. No? Uh, so what is the other, what is the best, I mean, what is the maximal set I can do? And uh, so let's do it in the following way. So since it's even, that's the reason for this choice, even. Uh, I can always uh, write it like this. So call gamma 1 plus i gamma 2 as some operator, I don't know, let's call it uh, capital gamma uh, 1. Uh, gamma uh, one, 3 plus i gamma 4 as gamma 2. In general, gamma i plus one, uh, 2i plus 1 plus i gamma 2i. 2j, let's say, 2j, I call gamma j. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the so, uh, I don't know, maybe I can put here the same, plus or minus sign, I put here plus minus, okay. plus minus, plus minus. So I'm just uh, taking the different combinations. Hmm? The plus combination I call, plus combination I call gamma 1 plus, minus combination I call gamma 1 minus. That's nothing, else, just relabeling, you know, taking combinations. Now, if you do this, uh, so how many such there are there? J, J will be equal to 1 to n, right? Uh, 1 to n, right? No, 1, uh, is it correct? Yeah, 1 to n should be correct. Maybe I should call it 2J minus 1. So 2J minus 1, yeah, because gamma 1 plus i gamma 2 is that. So 2J minus 1 up to 2J, right? So j goes from 1 to n. So you have two n gamma matrices and taking co n combinations with a plus sign and n combinations with a minus sign. That's all. So 2n goes to n and n, right? So this part will be. But now, if you do this, then you see that gamma plus i, gamma plus a j, gamma plus k, anti-commutator, is 0. Why is that so? Because, uh, so let's, uh, so 
this is uh, this is same as gamma 2j minus 1 uh, plus i gamma, gamma gamma small gamma plus small gamma uh, 2j anti commutator with the uh, gamma 2k minus 1 uh, plus i gamma 2k now it will split into four terms hmm? um, so this with that this with that will be uh, non-zero only if j equal to k right? and uh, this with that will be zero because th this is e odd and that's e1 so there's no way that will be right because this is proportional delta ij right? this is uh, uh, I mean the um, anti yeah, this anti commutator is proportional to delta EJ. These two indices must be the same. So if one of them is odd and other is E1, that's not possible. Similarly, if this is E1, that's odd, it's not possible. So the only possibility is this with that and that this with that. Okay? This with that gives me 2 delta IK, first one. But this with that gives me plus 2 I square delta IK. Uh, I square makes it minus, so this is zero. So all of these guys are zero, and this exactly the same way you see that gamma j minus with gamma k minus also is equal to zero. The only non-zero terms are when you have one of them is plus, another is minus. So gamma j and gamma k, let's say. Uh, this anti commutator will be some number, I don't know, maybe factor of 4, maybe I'm not sure, maybe 4 delta j. Right? Well, this is j. Because in this case, uh, it's sort of, you have a plus and a minus here, right? So this becomes minus i square. So it becomes plus, so it adds up. So it gives you 4 delta j. Okay? So the only non-zero terms are this. These are zero. So this means that I can perfectly well impose this condition that all, for example, gamma j pluses under my some state equal to zero for all j. J being one to n, not two n, one to n. I can impose this condition. There's no contradiction between that. Because if you try to do the similar argument, you will have an anti commutator of gamma plus j with gamma plus k, but that is zero. So there's no inconsistency in imposing these conditions. So once you have done that, now I want to construct all the other states. Okay. Now, if I have done this, then surely I cannot put some, let's say gamma 1 minus acting on v, I cannot add one more condition on this. This equal to zero. This I cannot. Why? Because if it was, if you had done that, then I could put here gamma 1 plus, apply gamma 1 plus there, and take the anti commutator, I mean, and like push it, push it through, like what we were doing with this in the re algebra. So when you push it through, but now it's anti commutator, not commutator. So I have to subtract. You know? So this I can write as anti commutator of gamma 1 plus, gamma 1 minus. Uh, acting on this and then so plus uh, minus minus gamma 1 minus gamma 1 plus acting on right because it's an anti commutator now the sum so that's why I have to subtract that no? when it was a commutator you had a plus sign okay? you know point is that this is zero by this equation right but this is not zero this is uh, 4 times delta ik delta 1 1 4 so it is not possible. You see, this is the maximal conditions I can impose. One more condition I impose, and it's inconsistent. So that's it. So, so this is not allowed. This I cannot apply, cannot impose. For any, any of the gamma minuses. That means whenever I apply gamma minus, gamma minuses, is not zero, it's going to give me some state. Right? So that's the idea. So then I can describe, I can construct all the states by applying gamma minuses. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, apply, so the, let's see. So how, let's say I start with my V. Then I apply gamma J 
minus actin 1 the V. Okay. Then I can apply gamma J minus gamma K minus acting on V. Okay. But already you see notice here that the anti-commutation relation which we wrote, gamma J minus gamma K minus anti-commutator is zero. Okay. So that tells me this is anti-symmetric in J and K. Right? Because uh, this is the same as minus uh, minus gamma k minus gamma j minus okay. by you know by using this because this is equal to, this is equal to minus of that minus I mean this is equal to that so this is anti-symmetric in j and k okay. I mean, if I call this state as I don't know uh, uh, something v j k let's say some state, then this is anti-symmetric in J and K. Okay. I mean, there are these indices here, no? so I, the state carries this index. But uh, the important point is anti-symmetric. Now, so that is a, so I can start, so this is the zeroth level state, this is the first level state, uh, second level states, then I apply two of them, then I apply uh, three of them, so gamma, I say, J1, gamma J2, gamma j3 minus 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 acting on v. So this is a level 3 state, huh? level 2 states. But again, this is again totally anti-symmetric. Okay? So this is going to be totally anti-symmetric. Everything is going to be totally anti-symmetric in this indices. Okay. Uh, and so on. So you can keep going. The last thing that you can write is just the product of all of them. Uh, n minus. This is the last one. This is the uh, what is it? Nth, nth, nth level. This because this will be totally anti-symmetric. There's only one state, totally anti-symmetric. It's epsilon. Right? Beyond that, it doesn't exist anything because beyond that, at least one of these guys will be repeated index, right? And the gamma square is gamma of one any any j minus square is zero from that equation. Because I mean, suppose suppose anywhere uh, the gamma uh, two of them are appearing in the same. I mean, if I look at the n plus one level, then at least one index must be repeated. So let's suppose gamma one one is repeated. So maybe it's something like this: gamma two, gamma three. Somewhere there is again a gamma one, and then all the gamma up to gamma n. Then what you can do is you can start moving this gamma one step by step. Uh, you can anti-commute, you could get a minus sign. That's all, right? Every time you move across, you pick up a minus sign until it arrives at gamma 1, just before that, and then gamma 1 minus, these are all minuses. Gamma 1 minus square is 0, okay? So this doesn't exist. Okay? So that's it. This is all the states you have in the representation. Now, so now you can ask the question, what happens if I now apply gamma pluses, right? I knew the gamma plus annihilates these guys. But gamma plus doesn't annihilate that. Right? As we saw already, that was a contradiction. Because this, when you do that, and that's why there's a contradiction with this condition, right? But now we are not imposing that condition. Okay, then this is a non-zero state. But nevertheless, if I apply a gamma k plus on that, what I'm going to get? If k is different from j, then I can move it across. Uh, anti I uh, pick up a minus sign, but then gamma k plus will annihilate it. Right? The only time it will not annihilate it is when this is j itself. No summation here. In none of these things I am summing. Repeated indices are not summed over. If I uh, apply that, then, okay, when I push it through, that will annihilate it. But there is an anti commutator which is not zero. Right? Anti commutator is uh, just 4. Okay? So, 4 times v, so you'll go back there. So, the upshot of this is that when I apply gamma pluses, it is going to move one level up. Each of these guys are going to go one step up. Right? Just like what we are doing with raising and lowering operators in the Lie algebra, right? But now it's not Lie algebra, it's the gamma, gamma matrices. Right? But the job is the same, they are doing the same job. Right? So, when you apply gamma minuses, you're going 
level down here, right? Ga apply gamma minus on that, you get, you come here. Apply gamma minus on this, you apply, come here. Right? So gamma minuses are moving you down, and gamma pluses are moving you up. Right? But that's it, this is the complete representation of gamma, all the gamma matrices. I mean, this, this, uh, 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 this is a representation for both gamma minuses and gamma pluses. So now you can count how many, what is the dimension of this representation? Well, how many states are there? Let's see. We can just write down how many states are there. Uh, this is just one state. Okay. That was my starting state. Here I have, uh, if I have two n dimensions, so this is n states, because j goes from 1 to n. Okay. Here I have anti-symmetric, so it is n times n minus 1 by 2. Okay. In general, if I have a, a product with the uh, gamma, so in, in between, let's say, gamma j1 up to gamma jk, so k, the k gamma matrices. Huh? So here, the number of states will be just the combinatoric, right? How many different ways you can pick k out of n? Because there are n possible indices. How many different ways I can pick k different indices out of n? That is simply the binomial factor n c k, right? And the last one, of course, there's one. There's only one unique condition. Right? So the total number of states here is just the sum, sum of n c k, k going from zero up to n. But now, if you look at the binomial expansion of, say, 1 plus x to the power of n, what is that? That is exactly the same expression, n c k x to the k, k going from 0 to n. Right? So this is the same as that, except I put x equal to 1. Right? So therefore, if I x equal to 1, this is nothing else but 2 to the power of n. So that's the dimension of this. Uh, so 2 to the n. So in 4 dimension, n, n is 2, because dimension is 2n, right? So 2, 2 squared is 4, and that's exactly 4 by 4 matrices. Gamma matrices are 4 by 4, right? In or Eddy's course. But generally is that. 2 to the n. 2 to the n dimension. <clears throat> but uh, this is okay. This is the this is the irreducible representation for the gamma matrices for this algebra. That algebra. I mean the gamma i, gamma mu, gamma mu, gamma nu, or gamma i, gamma j was two different algebra. For this algebra, okay. this is a irreducible representation. But that is not the same statement as saying that it's the irreducible representation for the Lorentz or the rotation group. Rotation group is SO2n, right? But before I move there, uh, is there any question on this? I mean, uh, think about it. Let's see if there's any question on this. 2 to the n is the number of what elements, what kind of elements? No, this, this is a total, this, I mean, call this state as 1, 2. So these are, these are all independent states. These are different level states. So this vector space is 2 to the n dimensional vector space. On which these new gamma matrices act. Yeah, but once you know the new gamma matrices, and you also know, so you know the gamma, mi gamma minuses, uh, how gamma minuses act on these states. They just move you down. Gamma pluses act up. So in this big space, if you choose this as a basis, you can write down a matrix for each of the gamma minus and each of the gamma plus. Correct. I mean, choose a basis for this. So, so each of them will be 2 to the n by 2 to the n matrices. Correct. But then, once you know capital gammas, then you can reconstruct construct the small gammas, right? So, do we know uh, how many dimensions V vector here has? No, V is one particular state, right? Yes. Then there is, these are others, these are n other states. These are uh, this many other states. So now call all of them. So I mean, uh, let's call this as psi 1. Uh, this as uh, psi uh, 2 up to psi n plus 1. Uh, all these states. 
uh, and co or, so you keep naming. So there'll be all together psi to the two n, two to the n, two to the n states. Yeah? So are all of them constitute the basis of this vector space that they live in? Yeah, I mean, so it's a two to the n dimensional space. So you you know you write a matrix. So yeah, exactly. As a dimension of the, the length of the matrix. Will yeah. Be exactly. Like that. So this all of these things you can write in terms of. I mean, a, a arbitrary state would be uh, uh, some number times this plus let's say a j times that plus a j k times that and so on and so forth, right? Uh, linear combination of this. That'll be the arbitrary state, right? Uh, but uh, so you can choose a basis for all these states, and then uh, so how many coefficients you will need to specify? To specify the state, you need to specify two to the n coefficients. Okay? That's what it means. That's what we are saying right here. So if I uh, so these gamma gamma matrices, gamma plus and minus. So what we what we are picking off is write this big column vector, which is two to the n dimensional column vector. Right? Then gamma minuses and gamma plus are just going to act within this space. So I can with some work. I mean, you no. Know, I can uh, uh, write down matrices for gamma minus and gamma plus, which will be. I mean, this you can uh, write it like this. No, the first one is the fir zeroth level. And the next uh, n of them will be the first level. Uh, next, uh, uh, whatever n times this one. This is the n of them. Uh, the n times n minus one by two will be the level two states. So you choose a basis like this. Then. In this basis, you see, you immediately see that gamma minus will be, so if I write it in this block form, etc., then since gamma minus moves you down, so gamma minus is going to be purely upper triangular, right, or lower triangular, depending on what you do. But it will be, so acting on this, it gives you that, right? So gamma minus will be, this will be non zero here, this will be non zero here, and so on and so forth. Not the diagonal, but just one block below. And the explicit numbers you can compute. I mean, by just using this algebra, those algebras that I wrote down. No, you can find out the numbers. Once you choose the basis, you can find the numbers. So, for example, you can choose a basis since this anti-symmetric. You can choose the ordering j less than k. Okay. So that will so like that you can choose all the bases. Uh, so that will be gamma minus. This will be gamma minus. Whereas gamma plus would move you up. Okay. So it's going to be upper triangular. So it will be in this block form. Uh, it will be uh, everything else zero except for this. Keep you moving up. So you can explicitly work out these guys, but I mean, it is not so much of constructing the explicit uh, gamma matrices. It is just to say what is the dimensional space. So whatever it is, is going to be two to the n by two to the n matrices. And once you know gamma plus and gamma minus, you can reconstruct gamma, small gamma mu. Right? Because small gamma mu, I mean, after all, right? I mean, yeah. How does this construction uh, have anything to do with SO2? At which, at which point do we connect? Yeah, yeah, so I, that, that's what I'm coming to that, yeah. yeah. Uh, so at the moment, it's just the Clifford algebra. Cliff, this is a representation of the Clifford algebra. So it's not even a real algebra. It's not a real algebra. This is a totally anti. This anti commutator. This is not uh, not the standard real algebra that we talk about. But it's some algebra. It's called Clifford algebra. Hmm? Uh, so this is the Clifford algebra. Uh, okay. um, so so at least we know that we can construct explicitly gamma matrices. But they will be 2 to the n by 2 to the n dimension. OK. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so now uh, let's see what is the relation with the uh, Lorentz or rotation. Because now we have, we have done delta ij, you know, so Euclidean. So we have SO, SO group rather than SO, SO n group, SO2 n group rather than SO2 n minus 1 comma 1. No? But as I said, you can go to the Lorentz by just putting some i's in some other factors. <coughs> so, okay. 
Now, uh, so what is the relation with the vocation group? SO, SO2. So SO2, what's the relation with SO2? The point is that once you have these gamma matrices, you can construct explicitly SO, SO2N generators. Okay. So the SO2N generators, JIJ, they can be written as JIJ. Okay. Um, you know what it is. This is the rotation. I mean, uh, if you write as differential operators, <coughs> if you think of as differential operators, it's nothing else but Xi D by D, Xi DJ minus Xj D. That is it. Just a rotation in the Ij plane. Rotation in the Ij plane. That's it. And they satisfy the standard algebra uh, Jij, Jkl is, um, I don't remember exactly, but I think it's uh, probably uh, delta Jk. There are, there are four terms huh? Jil. This is anti symmetric by construction because this was, you can think of this as a differential operator. So this is not, as we said, it's Xi dj minus xj di. So that's, uh, if i equal to j, it's zero. And when I exchange j and i, you become a minus sign. So it's anti-symmetric. So the number of these guys is simply the dimension d times d minus 1 by 2. So for us, d is 2n. So 2n times 2n minus 1 by 2. So that's SO generators, SO and rotation generators, and this satisfies some algebra. I mean, you can, uh, such a constants are given probably here. Uh, delta JK plus uh, delta IL uh, JJK, and then there are two terms with a minus sign. This you can determine by the fact that you know that this is anti-symmetric in I and J. So whatever you write down must be anti-symmetric in IJ, and similarly anti-symmetric in KL. So you can precisely fix all the other terms. So there are four terms. That's SO, SO2, SO D generator, SO D generator. Uh, so D, the 2N is D, where I, J, etc. go from 1 to D. Okay, now you can uh, show, I mean, this is not, doesn't take too much time, but you can show that you can write the J, I, J, once you have found this gamma, so you satisfy this condition, you can show that if you write, express J, I, J as, I forget the number, I mean, there is some number here, oh. one fourth or something like that. I mean, some some number is there. Yeah? One fourth, uh, I think. I think it's one fourth. Yeah? Uh, okay, gamma i, gamma j, anti-symmetric, anti-symmetric in i j. Anti-symmetric, of course, this just means the computer actually. Is it? Take that. Okay. Then you can. Uh, it's an, some. I mean, you have to do some work. Huh? A little bit of work. Just uh, plug it in here, okay, and go through this uh, this commutation relation, but all the time using this relation, and you show that you can show that this algebra is satisfied. Okay. So therefore, I can write a representative. Once I know the gamma matrices, explicit gamma matrices. Uh, so in this particular case, it's two to the n by two to the n matrices. So this guy is a two to the n by two to the n matrix. Okay. So we have an explicit representation of the SO2N algebra as a 2 to the n by 2 to the n matrix. Okay. So this gives me a 2 to the n times 2 to the n matrix matrices for the JIJ. All the JIJ are expressed in terms of that 2 to the n by 2 to the n. That's the, that's the point here. But the point is that this representation is not irreducible. Okay? This, is a redu this is a reducible representation. And the way to see this is the following. Okay, please ch try that. Huh? Just check this. That, that this uh, I think you have already done it probably in yeah, 4D example. Four four example. Four <coughs> now, the, remember the states were, we started with the V, then we have a gamma uh, I, V, minus, uh, then gamma i gamma j, uh, minus minus v, and so on, right, we have that. So, uh, but now, you see this, when you, this is of course in the small gamma language, but I can rely in terms of capital gammas. Hmm? They will involve always two gammas, with a plus minus whatever possibilities. So, in general, that schematically j can be of the form gamma plus gamma plus, 
I mean, there will be several terms, right? There some terms could be this, some terms could be gamma plus gamma minus, and some terms could be gamma minus gamma minus, right? Because after all, these gammas were uh, sum of gamma plus and gamma minus, right? You could invert that equation which I wrote. You know, I mean, I had the equation gamma plus minus i was uh, gamma 2i minus 1 plus minus i gamma 2i, right? Then you can take the, a, a solve for, you have two equations, one for the plus, one for the minus, for each fixed i, right? Then I can solve for gamma 2i minus 1 and gamma 2i, right? It will be a combination gamma plus plus gamma minus or gamma plus minus gamma minus, maybe divided by 2i or something like that. Huh? You're, you can find the relation. So you can, uh, so basically we are saying that this guy, whatever the j's, uh, this, each of these j's, all the j i j's, will be of this form, will have such terms. Some, some terms like that, some terms like this, some terms like that. Right? Now, if I apply, as we said, gamma plus, gamma plus when it acts on this, it moves one step up. So in the level, if it is 0, 1, 2, these are the levels, then 2, if I apply it on the <coughs> level 2, it will go to level 1. If I apply once more, it will go to level 0, because I have application of two guys. So this will raise by level, two levels, two steps. Right? This will move up uh, two steps. Similarly, 2 gamma minus will move it down two steps. And if you apply gamma plus mi minus, it comes back. Gamma plus moves up, but gamma minus brings you down. Right? So that means this action of the Lorentz generators, or uh, rotation generators, will move them in even steps. Not, uh, not single units, units of two. Two up, two down, or zero. No? Okay? So that means if I start up with, say, this state, and apply Lorentz uh, rotation generators, it is only going to go to even level states. And if I apply on this guy, it's only going to go into the odd level state, odd level states, right? So that means this, this space is not in, I mean, there are invariant subspaces, right? So if I just look at the E1 level space, E1 level subspace, E1 level subspace, that will be invariant under the action of the Lorentz generators, or rotate, I keep calling Lorentz, rotation generators, right? Okay? And similarly, the odd guys. So this this is an invariant space. Level subspace is uh, an invariant space. Uh, with respect to S O two M, because Lorentz generators are here. Yeah, so the important point is that Lorentz Lorentz generators always involve e, uh, two two gamma matrices. So it will always go two steps even number of steps. And similarly, odd level. Subspace will be another invariant subspace. So this big representation splits into two subspaces. And that, those are irreducible representations. Okay? So actually, the dimension of irreducible representation is uh, one half of two to that. There are two of them, the even and the odd guys. Uh, so, so there's half. This is the, say the even guys, and the odd guys are again another half. Ah, I didn't show you. I didn't prove to you. Okay, let's let's now show. Let's compute then the dimensions of each of these subspaces separately. Hmm? So I want to construct compute just the even guys and just the odd guys separately. Hmm? The sum of all that I know is the uh, uh, two to the n, right? Dimension. So if I want to sum over only the even guys. What I have to do? I have to write it like, uh, so is a n c k, where k uh, goes only from the even numbers, 0 to 2 n, but uh, even levels, uh, which I can write it as 2 k, uh, k going from 0 to n, right? You can write like that. Um, but this. Uh, no, maybe better not. Keep it, keep it as it is. So this k uh, zero to two n, but in even steps. But I, that I can write it like this. I can write it like uh, sum over all k, k all the k 
but I multiply by one minus one uh, one plus uh, one plus minus one to the k by two. Correct. Because when k is odd, this will become zero. So this, this those are odd terms are removed, and even terms for k equal to even this is two, but two divided by two is one. So this sum is the same as that sum. Okay. Um, but now look at, um, and, yeah. So so this therefore is the sum of two terms: one half of n c n c k, sum over all k, and then plus uh, one half of uh, sum c k n minus one to the k. Again, sum over k. But remember now, one plus x to the k uh, x to the n was n c k x to the k. Okay. So the first term is 1 plus 1 to the k, 1 to the one. This one is 1 minus 1. I mean, x is minus 1. So 1 minus 1 to the uh, n. So this term vanishes. And this guy is, this guy is simply 2 to, the, 2 to the n. So it is half 2 to the n. So exactly half. Similarly, you could have done it for the odd. If you were doing it for the odd, only uh, I mean this the k only odd, k odd, all the odd, odd case. Then you can again do it by just flipping the sign here minus, no? Because if if you replace it by minus, only the odd guys will survive. Even guys cancel. So here the sign will become minus. But anyway, we saw that this is zero didn't matter because this was a 1 minus 1 to the k, 1 to the n. So again you get that. Same. So both, so the even guys have dimension half 2 to the, uh, two to the, uh, two to the n and this also is dimension half 2 to the n. Okay. Now, so why, what is this? I mean, what are these uh, uh, two irreducible representations? These are the two chiralities of the spinners. You know, in four dimension, did Eddie tell you about the chirality, left-handed and right-handed chiralities? This, 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 that, that's what it is. Eh? Because you can see, uh, you know, the gamma, uh, gamma phi. In four dimension, you had uh, gamma phi, right, in 4D. We had gamma phi, which was the product of all the gamma numbers. So gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. There's some i factor. I don't care about the numbers. Eh? Some numbers. Yeah. But okay, there's something like this. What was the most important property of that? The important property of that is that this, uh, uh, this, uh, if you, uh, if you, uh, if you, uh, if you if gamma phi anti-commutes with any gamma i equal to minus gamma i gamma i, gamma phi. Right? This was the most important property. And in fact, you can see, I mean, if I multiply, uh, say, uh, gamma, uh, one of them, gamma 0 here, from the left, uh, I'm going to get, uh, okay, gamma 0, uh, I mean, uh, the, okay, this, uh, I mean, it's, it's clear, you've done that, right? Okay, so this anti uh, Now. What is, is there something like analog of gamma phi? Well, in this case, I have the analog of gamma phi is a product of all the gamma matrices. So gamma 1, gamma 2, up to gamma 2n. Because now we have the 2n gammas. So this uh, I will call, I don't know, uh, I, not gamma phi, 